Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, continuing on, this is the English 250, uh, Introduction to Literary Studies, and we are in the home stretch now. Um, we're continuing in the art and audiences unit. Um, last time we looked at Adorno. Um, it really is Adorno and Horkheimer. I just don't feel like saying Horkheimer all the time, so I just shortened it to Adorno, but there's two guys over there. Um, Adorno is concerned about the ways in which mass culture brainwashes um, people. Uh, into all thinking the same way, into all wanting the same thing, into all doing the same thing in the way that religion used to. Um, it, it helps to sort of create an organized society. Um, there's all kinds of, and I could have gone on for hours about, there's all kinds of things. Uh, just like, here's a really simple one. Um, do, there are so many television shows about the police. Um, to what extent do shows about the police, uh, if you watch hundreds and hundreds of hours of these things, um, after a while, you know, the, the, the cops on TV are like super trustworthy, basically. Um, you know, and, and it makes you, even when they do untrustworthy things, you're like, oh, wow, but I understand, you know, how hard a decision that was to make. I mean, do those shows brainwash you into trusting the authorities um, when maybe you shouldn't? <laughs> um, so, you know, do, do they, do they cause, do, does, does a huge number of Americans um, support the police when they shoot uh, young black guys? Just to, is some of that coming from the hundreds of television sh shows about cops that Americans watch every day that makes them think the cops are the good guys all the time? Um, and do those same shows also tell you that black people uh, are often criminals? Um, so, I mean, it's, th that's the, that's the issue. Adorno's really concerned about, about, the ways in which media, mass media, is very similar, um, you know, and and the ways in which it kind of brainwashes you. So that's a that, that's sort of that's Adorno. If you're going to write about Adorno, by the way, you're going to want to um, uh, you're going to want to you know look at the, the you're talking about audiences. You just need to imagine the the effect that the stories you're talking about have on the audience. Um, it's a great thing for my students to write about just because so many of you guys are interested in mass culture, that is to say, popular television shows and popular movies. Um, um, whereas it, that doesn't work so good with poetry. Poetry is not brainwashing anybody because there's like. 35 or 40 people in the world who read poetry. I'm kidding. It's more than that, but it's not a lot more. Poetry is not popular. Um, by the way, I would suggest um, the two things to do to not get brainwashed. There's a couple of things to do to not get brainwashed. Um, one of them is to just stay alert. Um, movies and TV shows are awesome, and they're so hypnotic. They're so expensive, and everyone's so beautiful um, that they can hypnotize you into just being like, oh yeah, give me more, give me more, give me more. Whereas instead, instead of laying back and letting it wash over you. Sit up and pay attention to the kinds of things they're doing and pay attention. Um, think about not just what's happening to the characters on screen, but what the people that made the thing are trying to do to you, the audience. Um, the other thing to do is don't just go for mass media. Um, don't, don't just go to pop. Don't, don't choose your movies by what's most popular in America right now or what's making the most money, um, but rather try to go see some out-of-the-way things. Now, the price for that is going to be that you're going to see a bunch of stuff that's terrible. Um, you're going to see, you're going to be like, I'm going to go see this weirdo black and white movie I never heard of from Iran, um, but it might be the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Um, and you're in New York, so you have a lot of chances to see other kinds of media uh, that are not um, you know, if you're if you're in the middle of nowhere, the only your your movie theaters are all going to be playing the big movies. But if you're in New York, you can go see. You know, there, there are movies from well, back when we had movie theaters. Um, there were movies, you know, from decades past that you could go see, and you can check out some other stuff. Um, most people don't want to do it because what they want is reliability, like McDonald's. But you guys are writing in lit majors, and you care about art. And if you do care about art, then you should try to go see some out of the way things, and also engage in some art. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and engage in some art that isn't mass media, meaning read some poems, read some novels, some obscure novels, <laughs> read some old novels, read some poems, you know, read some plays, um, you know, don't just go see the top movies and watch the top TV shows that Netflix and Amazon and Disney, uh, want you to do. So, you know, that's, that's basically the point with Adorno. It, it's really important for you guys, um, because if you're writing a literature major, that it means you care about art. And I think if you care about art, you ought to care about something bigger than, just the recent blockbuster releases everyone is talking about. By the way, notice that I'm not telling you not to do that. Feel free to care. I also like going to see popular movies. It's just that there's other things you might also want to do. So do that too. Okay, cool. So um, next up, we're going to take a look at a uh,
Adorno. No, not Adorno. We just finished Adorno. Next up, we're going to take a look at a. Uh, um, Next up, we're going to take a look at Pierre Bourdieu. Um, Bourdieu is is interesting. Um, I find Bourdieu um, kind of devastating uh, because I I fear what he has to say is like Adorno, kind of depressing. Um, but it's also very hard to argue with. Like I I don't want him to be right, but I fear terribly that he might be right. Um, and so I, I think it may be an interesting thing to kind of consider. I have a chair here. Maybe I should try sitting in this chair. Um, well, that's kind of a different perspective. So, um, oh, this is nice, actually. Um, so Adorno has some, uh, sorry, not Adorno, Pierre Bourdieu uh, has a, a different kind of perspective on art. Um, it's it's very depressing. Uh, it's not something I like to think about very often. Um, but when I read him, I have to admit that he makes some extraordinarily good points. Um, so, okay, uh, let's get started on Pierre Bourdieu as we head into the final units of this class. Um, Okay. Before we start, Pierre Bourdieu, I'd like you to do something for me. Um, and this is one of those moments when I really miss all of you, because this is a moment in class that I really like um, being in the room for. Uh, I, I, I really miss you guys. This sucks. Um, what I would like you to do for the Pierre Bourdieu, um, what I'd like you to do is write down, right now, take a piece of paper out, write down, I have no idea if you're doing it or not, so whatever, um, but write down for me a, a work of art could be, a, could be a movie, could be a song, could be a video game, could be a kind of music, like a type of music, right? Um, actually, listen, maybe we can even stick with music, but write down a type of music. Let's do, let's do music. Write down a type of music that you hate. Uh, so take a couple of minutes with that and just write down a type of music that you can't stand. Um, something that you think is raining now. Um, something that you think is very, very bad. Um, and, and it could be it could be an individual artist, but I think it's better if it's like a type of music. Um, and you could do this for other things too. Um, <clears throat> if you don't like sports, you could write that down. Um, if you don't like uh, um, uh, certain, like if you don't like superhero movies, uh, just pick something that you hate, um, something that you just think is absolutely awful, uh, like a certain kind of sitcom or a certain kind of TV show or a certain kind of movie. Um, and then what I want to do, and we'll come back to this piece of paper later, but it's very crucial for understanding what Pierre Bourdieu is up to, uh, and we'll come back to it. This is a uh, this is this is depressing, but it's it's depressing in a very interesting way. Um, Bourdieu raises a lot of kind of uncomfortable, uh, odd issues. So uh, let's take a look at Bourdieu. So Bourdieu here says the first sentence: "Whereas the ideology of charisma regards taste and legitimate culture as a gift of nature." Scientific observation shows that cultural needs are the product of upbringing and education. Okay, so this is a little bit, a little bit tough. So ideology is like a kind of philosophy of life that is such a big thing. No, it's a philosophy of life that people don't realize is a philosophy. Um, ideology is. I, I talked about this with Adorno a little bit. It is an important point. I didn't spend enough time on it with Adorno, so it's worth spending coming back to it now. Ideology is. Uh, oh, it's really cold now. Ideology is a, a, a philosophy of life that is so big, you don't even know what it is. The philosophy, you're just like, life's like that. Um, uh, and it turns out that if you pay attention to it, it, life isn't like that. It's just, that's how people tell you life is and you believe it because it's, it's normal for where and when you live. Um, so in American society, for example, it's obvious making money is extremely important. We live in, we live in capitalism is the ide one of the ideologies that you live with. Um, so that people don't even think about it. They're like, when I put the Frederick thing up, um, I, I was surprised, although I shouldn't have been, I was surprised by when I, the little mouse story, the, the children's book that I put up when the blog first launched, and, and, and so many students were just like, Frederick's lazy, like Frederick's not contributing. Um, be, why? Well, because the ideology of America is that you must be productive, you must be making money, you must be doing something useful at all times, or you're a lazy person who is living off of other people's work. Um, now, some of you guys are like, but that's true. Um, that's what ideology is. It's a, it's a philosophy of life that is so such a normal part of the fabric of everything you do in this culture that you live in that it's that it feels normal um it feels complete it's not you you're like this isn't a philosophy this is just how it is man um also ideology you get in sentences when you, when you hear people say things like well men are like this but women on the other hand are like that that's ideology because no they're not you mean men in new york city right now women in new york city right now but that's not true of like ancient Greece. Um, it's ideology that makes you think that's true. Where does ideology come from? A lot of it comes from art. I'll pick this up in the next video.